Hello, Scanning Secrets Part 1 is our post today. Thank you very much. We've achieved our initial goal here of 200 subscribers on the Fidget Revolution 2.0. So today, I'm going to start the first in a multi-part series on how to really get the best out of your flatbed scanner. If you want to look back to a few posts ago, I did a comparison between an Imicon 646 and an Epson V750, and an awful lot of you were like, wow, how does he get such a good scan out of a V750? Well, today, I'm going to show you one of the most important parts on how to achieve that quality. But first, if you have not subscribed to the Fidget Revolution 2.0 here on YouTube, please subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. Additionally, on Patreon, if you can support the revolution for any amount, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. So on scanning, the first thing that's the most important, which I've been outlining extensively here on Fidget Revolution, is getting that perfect negative or that perfect positive, depending on the film you're working with. And I've posted countless articles now on stand development, reduced agitation development, you know, C41, mixing all sorts of different stuff up. But it, all of it is about achieving that negative with a low contrast control density that matches the scanning density range of a flatbed scanner, in my case, an Epson V750 Pro. So that's the first most important thing. So if you've not watched those videos, please watch them. The second thing that's really important in getting a great scan on one of these type of scanners is to understand that they're all a little bit different. The calibration on these scanners is not super precise. So the point of focus that the scanner is going to use for scanning the negative fluctuates a little bit between scanner to scanner. And that's why it's important that you calibrate your scanner for the sharpness that you're looking for for your process. But let me show you some techniques that I use to get the best possible scan. First and foremost, everybody watching this video should purchase a piece of anti-Newton glass. This is so important. I will post a link to the source that I buy this glass from. By the way, I get no kickbacks, nothing like that. This is just a place that I buy it. Anti-Newton glass is essential in getting a good scan. And the way that I do it is the, uh, the, the matte side of the glass is face down like that on the scanner. Now, depending on the film that I'm working with, I might literally just be able to put a negative between the glass and the glass of the scanner and scan. Some films work perfect like that. Films like Fomapan 100 absolutely love to be scanned like this. And that anti-Newton glass, because of its matte sort of surface, it works a little like a cold light enlarger. It sort of softens the light coming down. It minimizes the grain, yet gives you the absolutely most sharp negative you will ever see. So anti-Newton glass is a must. You can't use regular glass. You need to use anti-Newton glass. Now, some negatives like to be put emulsion down. Some negatives like to be put emulsion up. There's no rhyme or reason. It depends on the way the base material and, 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 and the, the top of the film is created. Sometimes it creates a Newton ring, sometimes it doesn't. So you're gonna have to test. What I would do is I take a negative. Hold on, don't look at me. I would take a negative and I might try a test where I put it emulsion down, do a scan, lift it up, flip it over, do a scan and see if either one of those generate a Newton ring. Newton rings are like circles. You'll know it when you see it, it's ugly as heck. Usually flipping the film in one direction or the other will get rid of that, but it's important once again on the anti-Newton glass that the matte side, the, the side that isn't shiny, is facing down. The next thing that you can do to get a really great scan, if you're finding your film isn't quite perfect that way, is to use something like a cutout, like this and to actually tape the negative like this to a cutout. This is just a piece of thin plastic. You can use heavy construction paper, whatever you want. And to tape the negative to this, and then once again, put you know, a, a negative up or negative down. The nice part about using a setup like this is that you're masking off all that other light, so you're really getting a great uh, a great scan. Um, and in some cases, you might find that in order to get the optimized sharpness of a scanner, you need something like this to move the film just a little tiny bit off the glass. But once again, I find that it varies from film to film. Foma Pan 100 goes right on the scanner and it's perfect. 
I find films like XP2 Super, Portra 400, sometimes like to be up a little tiny bit in order to get that optimal sharpness. Um, I also, because I have an old Imicon 646 scanner, I have all the Imicon film holders. And these are fantastic because they're magnetic and I have it in literally every format size made. I can take my negative, stick it in the holder, and it's being held down in a really flat way, and then stick that underneath just like that. Once again, that little bit of diffuse light source on top is creating a softer light coming down and giving me just that perfect scan. I've spoken to friends of mine who, like, who have literally gone through and done like tests where you shim these devices thicker or thinner until you get that perfect sharpness. But one thing that's also important to understand is the limitation of optical resolution on these scanners is about 2400 DPI. Scanning a piece of film or a positive at any number higher than 2400 DPI is a mistake because all you're doing is interpolating data. Now, if you were scanning a positive, you know, read a print or something, you can go to much higher resolutions. But transparency material, negatives, max out at 2400 DPI. It's all you need. Um, so once again, the most important thing is to scan at the proper resolution, to have a piece of anti-Newton glass. They're not inexpensive, they're a little pricey, but this makes a huge difference. And again, if you're shooting films like Fomapan 100, you can go right to glass to glass or create yourself a mass system to optimize your scanner solution. So in the next video, I'm gonna be going over on the computer scanner workflow, step-by-step -step on how to achieve that perfect scan using the software. Thank you very much for listening. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Now go shoot some film.